Okay, so large language models. We had a really fun activity at uh, some of the world forums uh, the end of last year where we played now assist versus the developer meetups. Uh, and one of the ways that we demonstrated what a large language model was is that we sat everybody around in different groups and we said, hey, write a script uh, for this thing, like a script, like a, a code script. And some of them were simple, some of them were harder, but if you were by yourself, you would have to work off of the knowledge that you have and would be able to retain to write out a script to do like a glide record or, or a glide Ajax or whatever. Um, and then we had, if you had two people together, then that helps a lot. Two people have um, a lot of knowledge um, between them, especially if they're service now developers. And maybe one person doesn't remember all the exact syntax for one thing, but the other person does. So that helps. Now our knowledge is better. Now we organized everybody into teams uh, of like five or six people. And now that those five and six people uh, putting all of their knowledge together got most of those things done. Most of the prompts were, uh, they were able to write out a script and stuff like that. Um, and then what if we had, then we got all the groups together and we said like, well, who had the best, did, did everyone have a better one than um, now assist and why, why was that better? And now the room as a collective whole had a much better answer um, to the, the, pro the problem that we were trying to solve. That is essentially what a large language model is. Large language models, um, why they call it large language is because it's taking billions and billions of text and using that as the collective information that it's pulling from. As if all of our brains were put together so that we can solve something in person, large language models is taking a ton of text and it's saying, this is my knowledge base and this is where I'm gonna draw things from, but I'm a computer. I'm able to draw from this thing rapidly. And with these billions of tokens or words or phrases that go into my, my model, my large language model, basically a framework of text, um, there's, there's a lot more nuance to, it, to that and like how it's structured. It's not just like a big text file, but um, past that, a large language model, a large language model is essentially that, a collective knowledge gathered from GitHub, gathered from text online, literature, scrubbing the internet, depending on how good they were about licensed material, et cetera. Like it's, it's just a bunch of text, medical histories, uh, diagnoses for medical stuff, um, scripts for uh, all over GitHub, documentation, API documentation, examples of people's um, postman, uh, REST API calls, all of that stuff, all put into one big large language model. And then when you give the large language model a prompt, so when you go into a place like ChatGPT um, and you say something like, uh, write a story about a dog learning how to fetch. I don't know. What it's going to do when I press enter is that it's going to go, it's going to take my sentence, what, write a story about a dog learning how to fetch, and it's going to break it down into tokens. It's going to say, it's going to think about it in pieces, basically. So it's, I'm looking for a story, um, a, a story about a dog, a dog learning, a story about learning, a story about a dog learning, the dog is trying to fetch, the dog is learning to fetch, etc. So it's, it's breaking these things into tokens, to smaller pieces, trying to understand like, okay, here's my context. Now I'm going to figure out how I should respond according to this context. Um, and then ChatGPT also has hidden tokens behind the scenes, hidden prompts behind the scenes that are also going along with your prompt. But now it's taking all of that context and it goes, what should my first response token be? And when I say response token, I'm basically saying, what should my the first word be? Oh, when I look at all of my large language model history and data, when I'm writing a story, it's mostly starting with once, like if we're going for like fairy tale, like once upon a time, 
It's like, oh, the first word should be once or the or a because the it's I'm gonna I'm gonna lead with a dog, right? So it, it's it's taking a guess. I like, hey, what's the most likely starting token word? Uh, and it's once. Okay, now that I have once as my first token, and I now I have all my existing contextual tokens that the user gave me. Uh, what should be the word next word? Well, if my first word for a story is once it's 99.99999% likely that my next word is upon a time. And so I'm going to say that's my first sentence now, once upon a time. And that's what it's going to do over and 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 over again until it realizes, you know what, at this point, this is where my, my model, my text history, my large language model says that the story should end and I'm done and I'm going to send it back. Some models will even start reasoning. It'll say, hey, here's all my response tokens. Let me go back and reassess, like, is this still like fitting of what I'm expecting? And I'm going to start reasoning through. That's when they call it reasoning models. It's because it's going to keep going back and saying, like, hey, did I do a good job on this? Now that I have all these tokens, can I? how can I redo it? Um, and it's going to edit it and reiterate off of it before it gives you a response. But a large language model essentially essentially is doing that. It's it's a fill in the blank simulator basically. And it's just doing it rapidly, rapidly, rapidly as it's trying to figure out out of all of its history, what is the best response to give you by predicting um, token at a time, word at a time of and putting it together. So that's, that's what a large language model is. And so let's get into why a good prompt is helpful and why having examples or telling it it has a role is very helpful to the large language model. The large language model works off of these contextual tokens that you've given it. And so if you give it more context of how it should predict the next word or how it should determine what comes next in a sentence, it will be more accurate to what you're trying to go do. So if I'm saying, um, write a story about a dog learning how to fetch, it's going to, that's all it's going to work off of. But if I say, hey, you are a professional story writer, a children's author, um, no, like laureate, uh, incredibly accomplished, it's going to not just write the story, but it's going to look for all of its history of tokens that says like, well, I'm not going to think about the 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 stories that are just written all over the internet. I'm going to look for well-regarded author texts and examples of those stories. And that's going to change the response fundamentally than if I said, hey, your role is that you are a seven-year-old child learning how to write their first story. And it's going to, so that's the context it's going to give it. So, so like the, the things that you give it, the roles that you, the role that you assign the prompt, uh, the AI will dramatically change the result. And that's what we're hoping for, because the more context we give it, the better it will guess what we're, the, the words that it needs to give us back. So when you give it roles, when you give it instructions, when you give it all those things, uh, the response will always just get better because it will have more context on its predictions of what to give back to you. And then when we go to examples like no shot, one shot, few shot prompting, um, it just furthermore gives more examples. Like if you give a full example of what you're looking for, it's going to use that as context uh, to look for other examples that are similar to it and then predict based off of that. Uh, so that's that's how a large language model works and that's why prompt engineering is a thing or why writing good prompts is a thing. Uh, thank you for that monologue. Hopefully that was helpful. Maybe I'll clip that. Uh, how long was that mean? How long was I talking about that? Like. I'll, I'll use that and I'll put a video on it because that might be helpful because I think a lot of people don't know exactly how large language models work yet, but it's helpful to know why. Um, because then you'll know, you'll be, be a better prompt writer. Okay. Let's continue. Uh, 